What's going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. For those who don't know, I am an avid Barcelona fan. I have been for a really long time. Got a chance to play at La Masia when I was younger. These are a combination of Barcelona the city and one of my favorite football boots on the market today, the Nike Phantom GX2 Special Edition Barca. Now let's stop. Let's hop straight into the unboxing because these are going to absolutely crush and I think they look insane in photos. So let's see what they look like in hand. So you've got this beautiful uh, box special edition made for this SE model. Uh, a couple things about the colorway which obviously are expressed here with the box. You've got some sort of graffiti art, you've got the Nike swoosh, you've got the Barca colors which is the, the red and the blues which is really beautiful as well. That follows through all different sides of the box as well with the yellow Nike swoosh and then here you can see the sizing. You've got the Phantom GX2 Elite SE which stands for Special Edition, FG which stands for Firm Ground in my usual size 9 US UK 8 27 centimeters and a Euro 42.5. Now these are no different than any other Phantom GX2 but of course we will talk tech specs and everything in this as well. You get a really cool detail here on the inside of the box, which is uh, hopefully the light, there you go. Ooh, the lighting will pick it up. It's like metallic Nike swooshes inside, which is a pretty cool deal. And then you've got this really interesting paper texturing as well. So here we go. Yeah, super, super nice. Goodness, yeah, these look sick, I think. Really clean looking. I love the details through the sole plate. Very, very nice. These are definitely making the rotation because I think these look awesome. And I reckon these are going to look really cool on feet. White boots, to be fair, kind of go with really anything. Um, but as we get these on, there's the left boot. Beautiful. And then we'll get this paper out of the way because you get a really cool string bag with these as well. You get the Phantom GX slash Luna and you get that same textured design. What a real, this is a really cool string bag in my opinion. Very, very unique, very fun. So let's get this all packed up and we'll talk about tech specs of this absolutely beautiful football boot. Now, this is reminiscent of, this is obviously the Barcelona Special Edition. Now, it's not so much like FC Barcelona as it is the city of Barcelona. And they wanted to make a boot that paid homage to some of the modern street art, unique architecture, the pickup football scene, and everything that happens throughout the city, which is really, really cool. So a lot of the texturing that you see here, some of the cubic design, some of the graffiti art, a lot of that, those geometric shapes and stuff, pay homage to Barca street art and the unique architecture sprawled throughout the city. Artists like Gaudi and others who have made these incredible architectural feats within the city of Barcelona. It's really, really impressive if you get a chance to go over there and visit. Um, the cathedral is obviously beautiful as well. Um, the street-inspired graffiti is also to honor the street pickup football scene. So a lot of kids in the streets of Barca will be playing football. When I was over there, I got a chance to experience that as well, which is a really, really cool thing. Um, just playing with kids who can't speak English at all, but yet you can still speak with them through the game of football, which of course is why it's called the world's game in my opinion. Um, well, it's not my opinion, it's what it's called, uh, the world's game, because it is really sort of a language of its own, and the fact that they're paying homage to a city that sort of becomes synonymous with football. When you think of Barcelona, you think of FC Barcelona, you think of uh, Messi, you think of Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, all these incredible players that came through the academy system that are now legends of the game or continuing to play at a really, really high level, which is super impressive. So as far as tech specs goes, let's go through really quick uh, the short list of stuff that makes the Phantom GX2 the Phantom GX2, and then we'll get these on feet and of course do probably a play test on 
the FG, an FG pitch, just because this is the Cyclone 360 sole plate, which I don't recommend for AG pitches. So as far as tech specs goes, again, as I said before, this is a standard Phantom GX2, no different from any other model that I've reviewed, nor anybody else has reviewed. That's just a special edition colorway. This is a combination of Luna 1 and GX1. So what that means is it has a new grip knit upper with the grip patterns from the Luna, as you can see, this sort of like Cyclone little... Uh, rounded shot shield almost looking pattern. Um, these are actually grooves in the upper. If you haven't held it in hand, they actually stick up on the upper, make it really, really nice. Not only is the entire upper a grip texturing, but then you've also got the added grip elements of these little kind of strike elements, if you will, as well, which is super, super nice. The new grip knit is now a combination of fly knit, the grip knit, and of course the synthetic coating that goes over the top to create a little bit of a water resistance feeling to it. You've got the Cyclone 360 traction from the Luna 2, which I am not a massive fan of. That being said, on FG surfaces, and especially when it's really wet outside, I find this to be totally suitable for most um, of the longer grass pitches or even like just random FG pitches. These are totally fine. I'm not a huge fan of bladed studs just in general. I prefer a little bit more conical or even chevron studs. Um, but these do just a fine job. Like the, it's nothing to write home about. And I really do think that Nike should have just moved on from the Cyclone 360, like just scrap the entire Phantom Luna 1, go with the Luna 2, put a different sole plate on it, get a little bit more responsive here through the midfoot and make it a little bit more interesting. Because as much as I think this is cool as far as marketing goes, it's not going to make you more it's not going to prevent injuries as much as, say, a conical stud pattern would if you are on FG. And I would definitely not recommend these for AG, as, of course, you might um, know from being all bladed studs. And then this in particular in the forefoot can be pretty dangerous as far as changing directions really quickly. This is the lightest Phantom to date, which is pretty cool. So compared to other ones, I've got like an SG model of the Phantom uh, Hypervenom Phantom 3. I've got Phantom, uh, Phantom Venom over here, another pair of Hypervenom 3, some Phantom GX1s, Phantom GX1s, uh, Phantom GTs, like these are, I, I'm a huge fan of the Phantom lines, obviously have custom, uh, Phantom DF, you know, like a lot, like I really like the Phantom line. The Phantom line has just fit me really well over the course of, um, years of wearing them. I would say that GT or GT, GX2 is probably one of the wider phantoms in history, Nike's history. They really do a nice job of accommodating foot shapes, not only because this upper is just super buttery soft um, and really does mold to the shape of your foot immediately out of the box. That's one thing that I really love about this boot that I know there was a lot of unwarranted hate for this football boot when they announced that they were moving away from the GX1 and I will say, if you are a wider foot shape and you still really like the GX1, you are gonna love these even more. Cause I actually like these better than the first generation, crazy as that sounds. And it's not just cause this is the newer boot. Um, obviously I prefer the GX, like the regular GX sole plate in FG over the Luna sole plate, of course. But as far as the shape, the comfort, and the fit for my foot shape, this boot is sensational. It fits so well. It's really natural, unbelievable for, from a striking the ball standpoint, whether you're trying to fizz a ball in, whether you're trying to do the backspin, dipping, bending, like whatever. Striking a ball in this is like what, it makes me feel like what the old Hyper Venom and the old Phantom Venom felt like. It really just natural and fantastic, really. Um, Off-center lacing system, of course, helps with that a little bit, um, but that is something to keep in mind if you are looking for sort of that striking boot. These do give you just that little bit of extra confidence, in my opinion. And then you've got a really nice, as you can see, it's sort of pronounced in this particular model, um, but this padding in the heel area, the perforated suede in the heel feels absolutely awesome on feet. And I have had zero issues wearing grip socks or no grip socks, doesn't really matter. Um, this heel area really does a nice job of making sure that you fit in it comfortably without any unnecessary slippage. So if I've missed any of the tech specs of this football boot, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. Overall, I think this is a really nice product. As I said before, the asterisk to that is the sole plate. I just don't think it's up to par with what 
Nike has produced in the past, and it doesn't really make any sense to why they would go with the Phantom Luna sole plate when it, the Luna wasn't very popular. Because trust me, if the Luna wasn't popular, it wasn't because the sole plate was amazing, and it wasn't because it was just the upper. Yes, the upper was too stiff. It was marketed um, only sort of towards women, if you will, which is an amazing thing, but the boot itself objectively wasn't very good, and so that's what you have to kind of way up, and I just don't think Nike made a good decision putting the Luna sole plate on here. That's my two cents worth. Um, Nike, if you're listening to this, uh, I'm sure that is not something that you are surprised to hear as the Luna just in general as a product wasn't very good. But in my opinion, this will be totally suitable for FG surfaces. It'll be fine. You're not going to, you know, have any issues. Do not play with AG. Uh, do not play with this sole plate on AG surfaces. It's too, the studs are too long. It's too aggressive and it's just going to cause you issues. And there's a little bit of hot spots and stuff or not hot spots, but there's like pressure points on the bottom of your foot with some of these studs. So without further ado, let's get these on in the backyard where I'll do a little bit of on feet. Of course, I'll talk about why I don't think this sole plate is suitable for AG as my backyard is AG. And then we'll get these on for a play test later down the road for on a FG surface. And we'll get some really good kind of shooting training in these as well so let's hop into the backyard all right i'm out here in the backyard with the really really cool looking barca special edition of the phantom gx2 now as you guys know i really enjoy this silo in general yes i do have some pretty heavy critiques of the sole plate and the way that they've constructed and just kind of popped the luna sole plate on here especially when uh, there are so many other sole plates from nike in the past that they could have done gone with um hyper reactive from hyper venom 3 i'm looking at you uh and i just think that uh, other than that though this boot is really really fantastic and i think a lot of people really would enjoy this boot especially for wider foot shapes so let's get these on feet bam oh yeah very very nice so fit and sizing is perfect in a 9 us as you can see uh, my toes are able to wiggle a little bit and i've got a little bit of extra space on the toe area which is very very normal that's perfect sizing as far as i go um, these are a my usual size 9 us so that's what i would recommend for most people go true to size if you are somebody with a really thin foot and you absolutely must have the phantom gx2 i would probably go half a size down um but other than that i think going true to size is going to be the best bet for most people again that's true to us sizing i know i've talked about it in a couple of videos but um, i refer to true to size based on my us sizing just because that's what i use in uh you know for everything pretty much so that is the way it goes. All right, so the grip knit upper does a really nice job straight out of the box of wrapping my foot. And I would say that from a volume perspective, what makes these, I think, way more comfortable out of the box than the first generation is this toe box is definitely higher volume. At least it has a little bit more material to work with. And then the silo just in general is quite a bit wider fitting, especially given that it's a one piece upper. So it doesn't have sort of that overlap that keeps it tight to your foot. So the silo is definitely a lot more neutral shaped. It's not as pointy in the toe area. And from a midfoot perspective, like I have zero hot spots right here, which is where I get most of my um, sort of pain or not blistering necessarily, but sort of hot spots in that the lateral side of the midfoot. So for me, this is a absolute win as far as fit and comfort goes. And obviously this colorway is super, super cool being the homage to the city of Barcelona and its history building some of the best football players up from their youth systems. Now, right away, what I'm noticing when I get these on feet is the sole plate. So I know that that is the one thing that I have critiqued a bunch. Um, the AG model is probably one of my favorite boots on the market right now. And if these came in an AG, I would have bought these in AG, but unfortunately they only came in FG. So that's the, the model that I wanted to go for because I just think this colorway looks really cool especially that heel graphic just looks awesome and the sole plate to be fair the sole plate looks really cool um, but it's just like from a color perspective it's just not that great as far as traction goes it's uh, the studs right here and same on the other side are far far too aggressive this circular pattern of the bladed studs here is just not the move at all um, and I just think they were lazy in putting a technology that they thought was going to win and it didn't 
onto the next generation of boots, which is a shame because you could have made this one of the best Phantoms of all time, in my opinion, if you had just added a sole plate that was actually good. So Nike, if you're watching this, please do better because this is just, it's not the sole plate for the boot. This is, uh, this is Phantom Luna 1 sole plate and not Phantom GX2 sole plate. So anyway, here's a full look at the boots. Um, the sort of like white slash off white, depending on how you want to look at it, with the graphics packs on the back. I just realized the little, t the flap on the back was folded over. Um, but uh, I think they look really, really cool, especially with a, like a black kit or a darker kit. They look really, really nice on feet, obviously. Um, other than that underfoot sort of weirdness I get with the FG sole plate, obviously this is just a backyard grass it's not a train you know it's not it's ag but it's not like meant for training on so it's going to feel a little bit weird but after doing play tests in both the luna 2 and the phantom gx2 now um i just think this sole plate needs to be binned and we just go for maybe the ag sole plate but with slightly longer studs that would be perfect almost like mimicking hype uh magista obra one sole plate just with those conical studs or any tempos of the past so that's what uh but other than that the upper is super super soft the one layer or excuse me the one piece upper from the grip knit the fly knit combo with the synthetic coating feels really really nice um touch on ball is fantastic i think these are just one of those boots that you put on and you can play with immediately because it gives you a really it's not barefoot as in close to the ball barefoot it's barefoot just in the sense of you you there's no material anywhere on the boot that that is a barrier between the ball and your foot if that makes sense hopefully that distinction is uh is understandable but i the grip knit the feeling it gives you when you're manipulating the ball when you're doing little skills all sorts of like rollovers if i can actually do that right like little rollovers little elasticos like all that stuff feels so so good on the grip knit i know some people complained about the first generation being quote too grippy um, but in my opinion the grip knit upper just does such a nice job on the second generation because it has this little groove pattern from the luna one uh, you really do get sort of a dispersion of that grip, or at least there's not as much surface area that directly contacts the ball. I know I talked about this in either one of the play tests or the initial review, um, but basically what happens with those groove patterns is you've got less surface area. So when I'm just manipulating the ball, if let's say I'm dribbling with the inside of my foot, I'm dribbling with the inside of my foot, it really doesn't feel as grippy as the first generation. And that's I think a good thing for the most part, because when you do strike the ball, when you do want that little bit of extra whip, um, you know, part of the reason this grip knit upper exists and why it's so good is one, you get a little bit of extra grip on the ball when you want it, when you're striking it. And number two, it's great in wet weather conditions. So it allows you to have really, really tight control and feel like you just have the same amount of sort of grip integrity and touch integrity as you're taking, you know, any sort of touches and manipulating the ball in really wet weather conditions. And this upper, I think, does a better job of that than the first generation. The first generation was just like, I loved it, don't get me wrong. This is coming from, you know, again, keep in mind context, this is coming from somebody who absolutely loved the first generation. That one at times was so sticky that it was like, you know, you kind of go like this and trip over the ball or face plant, right? And I've seen players do that because of the way that um those that upper was constructed whereas this one really does feel super nice and you know obviously look at that super super soft i know some people will probably ask about this little groove right here yes there's a little bit of extra material but if i put my foot flat there's no grooves or anything and then obviously if i flex my foot there's a little bit of extra bump there but that's not really going to affect the play i don't ever experience that playing in my the the other or i guess the what would you what was that uh first generation the cyclone colorway Anyway, whatever that green, sort of green blue first generation colorway of the GX2 uh, had have had no issues with any sort of like weird material like this. So yes, of course you get it. Um, and I get that on the first colorway that I reviewed as well, but that's not gonna affect play at all because at when you're passing the ball with that area of the foot, it's your foot's flexed like this, your toes up, your heels down, and this is a really clean surface area for hitting. So for me, this boot kind of hits a lot of different you know, checklist points for me for a boot that I 
really want to take into a competition, whether it be a training session or a game. Um, and so that's why I pick these over pretty much every other boot on the market for like proper competition uh, type environments, simply because I think these are absolutely sensational football boots. Now, Luna sole plate, the Cyclone 360 sole plate on natural grass, totally fine. Especially if you have grass that's maybe slightly wet, these boots are like goat status because you've got you know let's say you have a beautiful firm ground pitch and you wear the firm ground version of the gx2 and then you have it's slightly wet maybe they've done sprinklers or something on it you get the amazing grip texturing of that upper plus you get um, a little bit more substantial grip with the bladed studs that's the only really scenario in which i would say hey, buy the FG model if that's all you play on or if you're a pro player watching this, number one, thanks for being here. Number two, um, you'd be totally fine with just the FG model, I think, because they're long enough where they'll be, you know, really dig into the grass, which is great. So um, for me, this is an absolute win. I think the colorway looks dope. I have an affinity for the city of Barcelona because I uh, was able to play for a summer or at least a portion of a summer out at La Masia at Barcelona. And so it's always been like my club since childhood. I've really, really loved watching like old Ronaldinho videos and stuff like that. And so to have a boot that's um, one of my favorite boots on the market that's also dedicated to the city of Barcelona is pretty, pretty cool. So definitely a boot for the collection. I probably won't be doing a play test of these simply because um, they're the exact same as the other colorway, which you guys have seen that play test and one month review will be coming out soon. So um, it's probably going to come out before this video comes out, but either way, it'll be out at some point. Um, but huge fan of the GX2, again, side note, other than the sole plate. Um, but I think this is just an awesome colorway and I'm definitely stoked to start to play and train a little bit in it as well. So hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you guys are interested in my favorite grip socks, which I didn't mention before, but they're in pretty much every video. They're the ones I have on right now. They are the Wee Foot grip socks. These are the thin version, which I love to wear for breaking boots in and or trying boots on in store. Um, they're absolutely fantastic. You guys can get 20% off with a unique discount code NOAA20 um, down in the description box below. I'll leave that code down there. So that's for you guys. Um, both the thick and the thin grip socks are absolutely fantastic. I wear thin to train in and then game socks are the thicker version that have kind of like a honeycomb texturing to them. So that's kind of how you tell them apart on the website. Obviously it says thick and thin, but you guys, uh, that way you guys get an understanding of what it is. So first link down in the description box below, as always be awesome. Take care. I'll see y'all in the next video.